Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Lisa Carreño. Thank you very, very much for being here. Um, if I could get your attention, please. Thank you. Thank you all very much for being here. I'm Lisa Carreño. In my day job, I manage a, a local scholarship program for uh, students who want to go on to higher education who wouldn't have the resources without our support. But in my personal life, I'm involved with Los Yang, the Sonoma County Latino leaders, uh, and for all my life uh, have been involved with or aware of social justice and the need for those of us who have uh, power in the community to create change from the inside. Um, recent events, the death of, of Andy Lopez, have drawn this community together in a most uncommon way. Um, community can be defined in so, so, so many ways, but when a child like Andy dies, and the way that Andy dies, um, happens in a community, we all become residents of the Moreland neighborhood. We all become part of Andy's family. Um, and we all struggle with what to do with that. What happens for each of us, I think, is we grieve in our own way and we try to take action in our own way. And today, what is happening is that the legislators and the policymakers who stand behind me are bringing what their strengths are to creating change in this community. So having said that, I want to introduce Senator Noreen em Evans uh, to talk about legislative changes that we hope will impact our community in, in a very, very, very positive way so that a tragedy like what happened with Andy never happens anywhere else in the state of California. Senator Evans? Thank you, Lisa, and uh, thank you to everybody for being here today. Um, before I start my remarks, I want to offer my sincerest condolences to the friends and the family of Andy Lopez. Um, this is an incident that has broken our uh, entire community's heart, and we all mourn the loss of Andy. Um, but it does make us realize, as Lisa said, we are all one community, and we all stand united in our desire to make sure that this tragedy does not happen again here or anywhere else. And that's why we're here today. We're here today to talk about a piece of legislation that is one tiny but important part in an ongoing process to help remove an imminent danger and harm from our uh, children and our communities. Let's be real about this. Gun and toy manufacturers profit by making toy guns that look just like the real thing. More than 200 incidents that involve um, the, the use or the threat of the use of lethal force involving law enforcement occur each year nationwide, more than 200, as a result of imitation guns being mistaken for the real thing. We know it's a problem. We know it endangers our children, endangers our communities, and endangers our law enforcement personnel. And we here in California have the ability to fix it. Senator DeLeon has been a champion of this type of legislation. And he and I, along with Assemblyman Levine and Assemblymember Mariko Yamada, are renewing our efforts to keep our kids and our communities safe by introducing the Imitation Firearm Safety Act. This is part of the Penal Code. It will better describe what an imitation firearm is and what it must look like if it's going to be sold to our children. It will enable law enforcement and the public to better differentiate real firearms from fake ones. This bill would extend um, the law to BB guns and air guns and would, would require that all toy weapons be painted a bright color or be translucent so that people can easily distinguish them from the real thing. This legislation will help protect our children, it will help protect the public, and it will help protect law enforcement officers from making tragic mistakes. All children play with toys. Many children play with toy guns. Toys should not get children killed. That's pretty fundamental. Nor should toys put law enforcement officers in a situation where they fear for their safety or for the safety of their communities. A toy should look like a toy. It should not look like a lethal weapon. And now I'm going to introduce my colleague, Senator Kevin DeLeon. Thank you so very much, Senator Noreen Evans. Uh, I want to thank you very much also for hosting uh, this important press conference. 
uh, here in your own backyard in Sonoma County in the great city, the beautiful city of Santa Rosa. Um, as Senator Noreen Evans just uh, stated, my name is uh, Senator Kevin DeLeon. And uh, again, I'm very honored to be here in Sonoma County. Toy guns are deliberately fabricated to look like real firearms. As a consequence, law enforcement officers have extreme difficulty distinguishing these fake guns from lethal weapons, particularly when officers must react within split nanoseconds to these emergency situations. One of the primary dangers posed by replica guns is that they're used by children, by adolescents, by young adults who do not comprehend, and let me underscore and emphasize, who do not comprehend the seriousness of displaying them around unsuspecting law enforcement officers or around armed individuals. As a result, officers and community residents can and do find themselves in very precarious situations when they are unable to distinguish replica guns from handguns and assault weapons. As a result, when officers must make a split-second decision on whether or not to use deadly force or to protect the public, these replica firearms are, can trigger tragic consequences. As we all know, on October 22nd, 13-year-old Andy Lopez of Santa Rosa was tragically shot and killed by Sonoma County Sheriff deputies who mistook his plastic airsoft gun that he was, actually, that he was carrying for an actual AK-47. In a very similar incident in 2010, another 13-year-old, Rojayent Gomez, in my own backyard, in my own district, in the city of Los Angeles, was accidentally shot by Los Angeles police officers who misidentified the replica handgun, a 9S Beretta, that he was carrying. This incident left young Rojayent a paraplegic from the neck down. Out of this accidental shooting, I introduced SB 798 in 2011 in collaboration with, with Los Angeles Police Chief Charlie Beck. But the measure failed passage in the Public Safety Committee. Unfortunately, these tragedies that happened here in Santa Rosa and Los Angeles are neither new nor are they uncommon. A study by the Department of Justice found that there are well over 200 incidences per year in which imitation guns are mistaken for real firearms. In the coming legislative session, I plan to reintroduce my bill along with my colleague in the Senate, who will be my joint author, equal to me as we move forward this measure, Senator Noreen Evans, your senator, along with my good friends and colleagues from the State Assembly, Assembly Members Mark Levine and Mariko Yamada. We will collectively be reintroducing my legislation that will require all BB guns, all airsoft guns, pellet guns, to have the entire exterior painted a very bright color. This will give police an opportunity to easily identify them for what they really are and avoid these types of tragedies. Toy gun replicas do not belong on the streets. They endanger children, they endanger adolescents, they endanger our teens, and they endanger law enforcement. We can protect everyone involved with creative and forward and proactive legislative solutions. My strongest hope is that we can act, enact legislation this time so that no more families are forced to suffer the terrible grief that the Lopez family has suffered today. With that, it uh, brings me great pleasure to introduce uh, a good friend uh, from the Assembly, your uh, State Assembly member, Assembly member, Mark Levine. The legislature has debated toy guns in the past and tried to pass strong laws. We must now try yet again as existing law is inadequate. When a child is playing with a toy gun, there must be no doubt that the toy is not a real gun. Consequently, we need a law that fully protects our families from tragedies like this. And I am proud to join my colleagues as a co-author of the legislation today. These toys put children in harm's way. It is time to deal with this issue in a manner that fully protects our families and our children. And I'm hopeful that this tragedy never happens again. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Assemblymember Mariko Yamada. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm Assemblymember Mariko Yamada, and I'm one of three of Sonoma County's representatives in the state legislature. I represent the fourth assembly district that includes portions of the southern part of Sonoma County, Rohnert Park, in the Sonoma Valley. I want to clarify that all three of your representatives in the state assembly are joining together in a unified voice that includes Assemblymember Wes Chestro, a longtime Sonoma County representative, my newest colleague, Mark Levine, and myself. We look forward to working with our Senate colleagues uh, to enact this very common sense and straightforward measure. Um, you know, I'm a professional social worker by training, and we believe that prevention is a lot more important than reaction after the fact. Uh, the tragic loss of Andy Lopez, along with so many other senseless uh, injuries and, and losses to our community, uh, we, we can take measures, we can take action to address these. And uh, that's why I'm pleased to join you uh, this morning and again look forward to moving this legislation through next year and hopefully into law uh, before very long. Thank you very much. And I'd like to introduce uh, County Supervisor for the 3rd District, uh, Shirley Zane. Good morning everybody and thank you for being here. Um, I spent um, four years of my life living in two of the most dangerous neighborhoods in America, South Central Los Angeles and Humble Park, Chicago, as an inner city minister. And I still remember uh, at nighttime hearing guns. Um, there were many, many tragic losses of lives because of guns and gang violence. And this legislation today to regulate toy guns is one of many things that needs to be done to prevent another tragedy like Andy Lopez. But let's not pretend that it's all we need to do. The fear and the violence that permeates our country will require a dedicated commitment from all of our community leaders, from our county leaders, and from our youth, as they have so demonstrated in this last 30 days. The violence is systemic, it's pervasive, and it shatters lives every day. Every day, a mother's heart is broken, a young life is snuffed out before realizing its potential, and every day, a community's heart is broken, as it was 30 days ago today, upon the shooting of Andy Lopez. On December 3rd, the Board of Supervisors will adopt the county's legislative platform that will include support for this and related efforts that will aid local governments in taking action to protect our communities. The Board of Supervisors will also direct staff to reach out to gun, toy gun manufacturers to seek collaborative solutions on this issue in addition to legislative action. Please join me Senator Evans, Senator DeLone, and all of the other speakers that are here today in support of the Imitation Firearm Safety Act. It's just common sense. Toys should look like toys. And I ask that we continue to work together to change this tide of violence in our communities with all of our local and our legislative efforts. Thank you. And I'd like to now introduce Councilwoman Julie Combs from the Santa Rosa City Council. Thank you. First, our hearts are, are all, all of our hearts are broken. Our sympathy and our feelings go out for the family, the friends, the teachers, the school classmates of Andy Lopez. Andy is all our children. While this incident occurred just beyond the boundaries of the city of Santa Rosa in the county of Sonoma, our grief knows no political boundaries. This legislation is not about making a judgment or about casting blame. It is about taking action to prevent tragedies like this one from happening again. The Imitation Firearm Safety Act is one of several steps we as a community, as a state, and as a nation 
need to take to stop the deadly misidentification of play guns for real weapons. I want to thank our own Senator Noreen Evans and LA Senator De Leon for continuing their work for the safety of our youth by moving forward this legislation in California to clarify replica guns for the public and for law enforcement officers. I also want to appreciate the work of Los Angeles Police Chief Charlie Beck for his collaboration on this legislation. We need to prevent the misidentification of imitation guns. The 1990 study of the Department of Justice found over 200 incidents per year in which imitation handguns were mistaken for real firearms. That was in 1990. This number is undoubtedly higher today. I will be bringing a resolution along with my colleague Gary Wysocki. I will be bringing a resolution about this act forward to our Santa Rosa City Council at our next meeting, requesting that we as a council send a letter of support for the Imitation Firearm Safety Act. And I hope that we, like the City of Los Angeles, can move forward an ordinance that is more restrictive than state law regulating the manufacture, sale, possession, or use of any BB gun, toy gun, or replica gun. Eliminating the confusion over toys and guns is a good first step for our council as we go forward with more actions to prevent future tragedies. Prior to my time as a city council member, I served as a representative for the South Santa Rosa area on our community advisory board. And I know that we as a city and as a community have more actions to do. Actions that include working together toward the annexation of our Southwest County Islands, creating and investigating how we can create a better citizens review policy, improvements in our own neighborhood policing policies, and in the relationship among our community and our city and our county government. Again, I wanna thank our senators, our own Senator Evans and Senator DeLeon for championing these le these, this legislation and for promoting gun replica safety. As has been said before and deserves repeating, toys should look like toys. Thank you. I would also like to introduce our own Reverend uh, Curtis Bird, Executive Director of the Gray Foundation. Our hearts and our prayers are with the Lopez family as they relive the loss of their son, Andy, one month ago today. As the world and the global community prepare for Thanksgiving holiday, there will be one empty chair at the Lopez household. We want to thank our lawmakers, Senators Noreen Evans and Kevin DeLeon for having the courage and the wisdom and the uprightness to stand for accountability and transparency. I want to thank them for their courage to bring a new beginning at restoring the public trust, to bring a bill to prevent the misidentification of lethal weapons. Let us pray that this courage and wisdom reach all of our lawmakers, turning stubbornness of impossibilities into the blessings of creative possibilities. Let us pray that we come to recognize one broken heart in one family is a broken heart in the entire global community. Let us pray for a blessing in this adversity Please give us meaning and remember, Andy, and let us relive the open wounds led us by the death of those who have lost their lives at the hands of and because of imitation weapons. Let us pray that our God will make a way out of no way, answer prayers and use its omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient arms to keep our global community safe and secure this day. We pray in your great name, amen. And now Senator Noreen Evans will take questions. 
Thank you, Reverend Bird, for those wonderful remarks. Before we actually take questions, I just want to say um, this is going to be an uphill battle. This legislation has been introduced in the past, and it is not uh, passed through the legislature. So um, I want people to understand this is going to take a real concerted effort by our community and the state as a whole. And um, before we take any questions, I, I want to um, acknowledge the elected officials that are here in attendance. We have representatives from uh, Congressman Mike Thompson's office, Assembly Member Chesborough's office, and from the Sonoma County District Attorney's office. We also have um, County Supervisors Efren Carrillo and Mike McGuire, as well as Santa Rosa City Council members Gary Wysocki and uh, Aaron Carlstrom here. And we have the President of the Sonoma County Democratic Party, Stephen Gale. Um, and I hope I've mentioned everybody um, that's an elected official here. But um, the point is, we have a cross-section of our community here today ready, willing, and able to see that this legislation gets passed. And with that, uh, Senator DeLeon and I are, are uh, ready to take questions. So the question is, why do we think this time will be any different? It has to be different. <laughs> it, uh, you know, this is common sense. And sometimes it's difficult to get common sense to prevail in the California State Legislature, uh, but I am very confident that it will. I think, um, you know, every time something like this happens, a new community is awakened to the issue. Um, it's happened in Los Angeles recently, as we've heard. It's happened now here. Um, and the more this happens, I think the more people stand up and take notice. And um, all of us here today, uh, locally and statewide, are gonna work really hard to make sure it gets passed and signed by the governor. Mr. DeLeon. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, you've had a watershed moment uh, here in Santa Rosa. As Senator Noreen Evans just mentioned, uh, we've had this tragedy occur time and time again uh, throughout the state of California, throughout the entire nation. But what occurred here uh, not too long ago, on October 22nd, was a watershed moment, not just for Sonoma County, but this is something that has resonated throughout the state of California, throughout the entire nation. Um, Senator Noreen Evans says it perfectly well. Uh, there is no choice. This legislation has to move forward. It is not anti-gun. It is not anti-Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. This is pro-children, pro-teenagers, and an instrument, if you will, for law enforcement uh, to be able to make a rational, wise, split-second decision when they're in that type of situation. We're putting children's lives at risk right now. So again, let me underscore and emphasize, I can't underscore enough, what took place here in Santa Rosa is a watershed moment for the entire country. This has resonated. Just yesterday, I've done interviews with national press in Los Angeles as it relates to Santa Rosa. Yeah, it usually doesn't happen, you know, but again, let, let, me, let me just really quickly before we, we continue with the Q&A, uh, for the press in Spanish, we have Telemundo, in Univision, I just want to say just a couple things. No más quisiera compartir algunas palabras muy breves eh, para los de este, los medios de la español. Eh, este niño de solo 13 años, este super jovenazo, Andy López, murió a las manos de los agentes policíacos. En este caso, este, los abuelos del condado de Sonoma, porque pensaron que estaba armado, armado con un, un arma de estilo militar. AK-47, comúnmente conocido como un cuerno de chivo. Pero en realidad, la tragedia era, la realidad, que no fue un arma real, pero si no, fue un arma de imitación, un arma de balines. Y esto fue la gran tragedia para este gran jovenazo, Andy López. Déjeme enfatizar y subrayar que es demasiado difícil, es de, demasiado difícil por los agentes policíacos por los abuisiles y también para los miembros de la comunidad, saber cómo discriminar, saber cómo, saber cómo analizar la diferencia entre lo que es un arma estilo militar AK-47 y lo que es algo es de imitación, una pistola de aire, una escopeta, un rifle de largo calibre. Y por eso las consecuencias de no saber cómo distinguir las diferencias son trágicas. La propuesta mía, la propuesta de la senadora Noreen Evans, la propuesta también de Mark Levine y también Mariko Yamada y Assembly Member Wes Chesbro, obligará, obligará a que todas las pistolas, armas de imitación, armas de aire, armas de balines, serán 
pintadas de colores brillantes. Y así esperamos, si Dios quiere, que los agentes policíacos, que los abuesiles, que todos los miembros de la, la comunidad van a saber cómo distinguir la diferencia entre lo que es real y lo que algo que es de imitación. Um, one other point I would make is this legislation is not only pro-children, it's pro-law enforcement. It's a tragedy whenever our law enforcement officers are in a situation like this. It's a tragedy for them, it's a tragedy for the family, it's a tragedy for the person, for the child. So um, this is pro-law enforcement legislation and I'm hoping to have statewide law enforcement support as we go forward. Other questions? Yes, sir. So the question is whether we expect um, significant opposition from the gun lobby and the toy manufacturers lobby because we received that last time this bill was introduced. Um, I would say yes, uh, we do expect to have that kind of opposition. Um, but again, th the more this happens in every community, I think the more common sense prevails and people start to take a look at what needs to happen. Um, we, we do not underestimate the lobbying power of the NRA um, and the toy manufacturers. Uh, but um, I also don't underestimate the power of communities and the power of law enforcement to push back. And that's what we are, um, we're planning to have that kind of support to be able to push back against what really is in reality a profit motive at the expense of our children, our communities, and our law enforcement officers. And that cannot stand. Mr. DeLeon? Yeah, I agree with Senator Noreen Evans. They'll be sizable. They'll be uh, very vocal. There'll be a, a very visceral uh, opposition to this measure, just like there was uh, last year. Um, the reality is the National Rifle Association, um, their motives or perhaps perhaps their rationale and opposition to this measure is somewhat befuddling because, again, to emphasize and underscore, this is a measure that has nothing to do with real firearms. This is a measure that has nothing to do with the Second Amendment of the Constitution, the right to bear arms has everything to do with safety for children. Now, no pun intended, but a shot across the bow, we extend ourselves to the manufacturers of the airsoft industry, the BB gun, pellet gun industry, as well as imitation toy guns. We extend ourselves to come sit down at the table with us. We don't want to have an adversarial position. We understand their business models predicated on selling imitation firearms that look like the real thing. We understand that young boys in particular, young teenagers, young adults like to have these types of firearms that look exactly like the real thing, but the consequences are very severe. Nonetheless, we're willing to extend ourselves to sit down with the manufacturers to see if we can, in a collaborative fashion, come up with something that actually makes sense. So again, let me emphasize this. This is not adversarial with regards to the manufacturers of airsoft, BB guns, pellet guns. We will sit down. We invite them to come sit with us. We will go to them. If we can collaboratively come together as a community, they can still sell, keep their business intact. We're not trying to put anyone out of business. We just want to make sure they can sell in a manner that's responsible so we can make sure young boys, young teenagers and adolescents are not killed or paralyzed. Other questions? The, the question is, is one of the arguments against this type of this legislation is that the quote unquote bad guys or criminals will in fact you know, paint uh, their guns, their real guns presumably, uh, bright colors, green, pink, yellow, neon, orange. Um, I just got off the phone this morning uh, on my way to Santa Rosa with arguably the best police chief in the country and that is LA uh, Police Chief Charlie Beck. Charlie Beck has been a police officer of LAPD for 37 years. He spent 20 years in South LA. He was also the captain at one of the most notoriously violent uh, divisions in the country, which is in my district, the Rampart Division. In 37 years as a police officer of LAPD, the second largest police force in America, he has never come across one single time where a criminal has gone out of his or her own way to brightly color an AK-47 a long gun, a shotgun, or a handgun. In fact, the reality is you can do that today. You can do that today. So in short, 
that's a false argument from the opposition. And let me be, be very clear about that. I would um, just add one other thing. Um, yes, obviously, nobody can stop a toy gun from being repainted so that it looks like the real thing. But it's a little bit like seatbelts. The legislature can mandate that they be placed in cars, but we can't mandate the common sense to require people to actually buckle up. So um, we can mandate that these toy guns be painted in such a way that distinguish them from the real thing. Common sense obviously has to apply here. We can't legislate common sense. But this is a very significant piece of legislation that will start to help prevent these kinds of preventable tragedies. Other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, technically, in a nutshell, what it will do is it will require all manufacturers uh, who manufacture in the state of California, those who manufacture outside of the state of California, but export their goods uh, for consumers in the state of California to manufacture an imitation gun. An imitation gun is the catch-all, if you will, with regards to airsoft guns, something that expels a uh, projectile whether it's plastic or a BB, which would be metallic. Right now, the current laws is six millimeters or smaller. We'll go beyond the six millimeters. I can't give you an exact uh, uh, figure post north of six millimeters because we want to make sure that the unintended consequences are that these manufacturers won't try to find a loophole and start producing a BB gun, whether it's metallic or uh, an airsoft gun that has the ability to expel a projectile that's 6.2 millimeters if you will. So now all of a sudden you have a law in the books, but now they sell a 6.2 millimeter, you know, BB gun, which under the law, if this becomes law, which is our expectation, they can get around the loophole. So brightly colored or translucent BB gun, which is metallic, airsoft gun, which is plastic or pellet, toy gun, airsoft gun, replica guns, translucent or bright colored in the state of California. Any other questions? Uh, the question is whether we have other legislation. We don't have any other legislation at this time. Um, I think the community is involved, as you know, Mr. Moore, in a dialogue about what happens locally with respect to um, how we can find other ways to address the ongoing problems that we uh, have faced as a community, um, including uh, the Board of Supervisors is moving forward with at least studying, appointing a task force to take a look at a civilian uh, or citizens review committee, um, something that I've been in support of for almost 20 years now. Um, and that our community has been discussing for a very long time. Uh, at this point, though, there is no legislation being introduced. Um, I am looking at and uh, working with consultants in the legislature about what other opportunities are out there. So this is the beginning. And it's a very small, but it is a very significant step. But it is a beginning in the ongoing attempt to make sure this doesn't happen again and make sure that we address the issues that have been long simmering in our communities. Uh, I've been given the high sign that it's time to wrap up, so um, I'm sure that many of us will linger if there are other questions, comments that people would like to have. Thank you again for everybody's, yes. Yeah, 50 years since JFK was killed. Thank you for reminding me that we should acknowledge that uh, tragedy 50 years ago. Um, thank you very much for coming, everybody, and we appreciate your time.